Hi, in this video I will show you how you can for free pull in stock exchange quotes for various companies and also in the second stage how you can pull into Airtable financial statements and more advanced financial data about publicly listed companies. Let's get started. Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated and let's start with this simple Airtable template where you can see that I have a couple of stock tickers, a couple of stock exchange symbols for, for companies listed here. And what I would like to do is update some of the basic financial information, such as latest price, price change, the averages, as well as a PE ratio for those companies. And to do that, I'll be using a website which is called Financial Modeling Prep. This website gives you a very very rich API with all sorts of different financial informations and different information that you might be needing if you're in finance industry. The rates are super affordable, but we will start with the free plan, which actually has 250 requests per day, which is great for initial testing and, and playing with it and so on. So the first step you would need to do is to register with financial modeling prep and then get your API key, which we'll be using for the request in here. Then the second tool, apart from Airtable that we'll be using will be make.com. You can find the link to make.com in the description of this video. And here we'll also be using the free plan to make requests that will get us the financial data and send it back to Airtable. All right, so let's start with the basic scenario of getting the price for the companies, price and price changes for the company. So when we go to the documentation of financial modeling prep, what we need is stock price module. So once we get to the stock price, we have a description of their API, how to get a quote for a specific company. So we'll start with the most basic quote here, which returns us the information that we need, such as price, such as day low, high, price average 50 days, and, and other information. So to access this information, we will start with the following. So let's start with a new scenario in Make. And we will start here with Airtable module. And we will use a module called Search Records. You need to select the base and the table. We're using stock quotes. Here we will pull the data for all of the companies here, but you could also limit this to a specific view. You could select only specific grid view and so on. So here the limit of the company is 10. So once we run it, here we will retrieve data for 10 different companies, actually eight because we only have eight companies. So we have tickers for eight companies. All right. Then the next module will be HTTP request and we will use a standard make request. So what we need from here is the URL. And here, as you can see here, we have an Apple that is being used as example instead of Apple. Right now we'll use the symbol element here. So we want to substitute with whatever is the current symbol. So let's delete the apple. All right. You also need to substitute the API key with the API key that you will get from the dashboard. And the method is everything stays the same. What we would like to mark here is parse response so that once we get the response, it is parsed into a, a data format that Integromat can use. Okay, so please update this with your API key and click OK. I have updated the API key and let's run it once to make sure that it works OK. All right, so we have received response over here and now we'll use a next step, which will be update a record. We will update the same base and the same table that we have been getting the stock symbols from as a record ID. We will receive the record ID over here and then you can see the symbol. We don't want to change it. It's the same. And now you can see inside of data, you have all the information that has been returned from the financial modeling prep. So what we will do over here is put price, then price percent change because we are inside of Airtable uh, environment and Airtable 
in this particular column I am using percentages so it's actually expecting percentage as a number not with the percentage value and here you can see that the percentage is um, already in points so what we need to do is divide this one by 100 and then let's go back and let's add the 50 day price average 200 day price average and PE ratio okay so that would be everything so that would be one scenario and let's auto align it and run once and you can see everything has been processed and now all the data has been updated and if you would like to know what was the, the date when this was updated you could write here date and either use last modified time on all fields so this would tell you when this was updated or you could only set it on a specific field price so when was the price updated or you could also send this data from integromat okay now let's work on a second scenario that will give us some of the deeper information about the stock exchange tickers and about financial statements that those companies have been filing so that for example you could analyze the uh, revenues and profits and, and other information here so let's delete everything here what we will be using for this will be the module called financial statements so this endpoint this api returns financial statements filed by the company and you can say whether this is supposed to be last 5 10 120 financial statements and so on and you will see that within each one of the financial statements you get such information that you would expect from financial statements cogs operating expense uh, income before tax and, and so on um, eps so all them all the necessary information that we can pull for a specific company here so let's build a scenario like that so this scenario will save go back and we will create a new scenario over here or actually we can also go back and we can clone the previous scenario so that we have a bit easier start so now instead of this api request we would use a different api request based on the information here so what we would need would be the income statement and here we will also similarly change the apple placeholder into the symbol as a limit we will take maybe the last uh, last four and then for the api key you need to add your own key over here okay let's disconnect the the final module because we will not be using it let's run it once and we have received the data and the next step would be to use array iterator and in each one of them for each of the companies we will receive within the data we will receive multiple statements so i'll just put the array over here and let's run this one more time so now you can see that for every company every one of eight companies we have received four different bundles which would be for example for for this we will receive all the statements that they have filed the last four statements you can see the full year statements when the time is going back 2000 2001 2020 2018 so this way we are getting individually each of those statements for each one of those companies so now the next step would be to upset the record so update or create new so if we have that statement already we would update this statement or if it does not exist we would create a new one for now we'll keep the record id here empty but we will link this to the stock item to the symbol that was starting this sequence so we know that this will be all the records that are related to this particular stock ticker the next element would be the date of the statement reported currency filing date and i have added only a few of the information from here but you can add whichever ones are useful for you okay so let's run this once i have made a mistake because i have linked this to the symbol instead of the actual record id so instead of selecting symbol this is supposed to be the record id let's do it one more time
you can see this one is executing and the statements have been added over here you can see that the statements are being populated right now okay so what I have done in here is that for the name of the statement to be able to recognize them, I have used the, the stock ticker as the start and then separated by a hyphen and then a date formatted in format year, year, month, month, day, day. Uh, the same format as we are receiving this from Integromat uh, from, from the API in, in make.com. So now we will add one more element just to make sure that we do not create new ones all the time. We will just check whether a particular one exists. So we'll add a search module here. And the formula that we will use will be called name equals, we'll start um, quotation brackets and it will be called symbol, symbol from, from air table hyphen, hyphen filing date. So, if that filing for that particular company exists. So this was just one way how to track whether this entry already exists. So if it exists, it will be located here inside of the search record, which means we will know an ID from this module that can be updated. So if it's not found, that ID will not exist this means that the absurd module will create a new record. If it exists, if the ID has been located, this means that it will only update that record. So let's see this in practice. So right now we have 32 different records. So if we run this, there is no change between today. I don't think any of the companies have filed anything new. So you can see that at the moment, everything is just being updated. There is really no change in the information. We got to 32, nothing happened. But if we would decide to delete the last two, and then even if we by mistake make any changes to the data, we delete some information here, you will see that if I run it once now, the new records will be created. These records will not be created because I have deleted the filing date, which was the, the key. But in principle, you can see that basically the new records have been created. We ended up with uh, 32 records. So that's, so that's the same. Um, usually there won't be any changes uh, in the filings, uh, but I just wanted to show you that in a situation like this, the record would be updated. So the old records are updated and the new ones added. So right now, if this is if this is working as you wanted, you can set the scheduling and you can probably not every 15 minutes, but you could set it day of a month. So for example, the first of the month, you could check for any new filings or middle of the month and so on. All right, so I hope this was uh, useful for you guys. And then please do like and subscribe and share in the comments what other automations would be useful for you. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm.